Good morning! Welcome to Worship with Zion Lutheran Church in Stewartville, Minnesota for Sunday, October 4th. It is good to be gathered together as the people of God for worship, to hear God's good news, and be strengthened in our faith together. As we begin our worship today, I have a few announcements for you. Um, first things first, since it is now October, the weather is getting a little bit cooler, and um, we anticipate that it will now be too cold to have outdoor worship at 10 a.m. on Sundays. So as of this weekend, the second service is going to move into the sanctuary, and our custodial staff will begin cleaning the sanctuary, uh, disinfecting that is, in between services from here on out. Uh, so we give thanks for our custodial staff being so willing to do that. Um, if you are a person who's been worshiping at home and you are considering coming to in-person worship and want to know a full um, explanation of what's happening to be safe and um, thorough to make worship a safe experience for people in light of COVID-19, you can find a full description of our indoor worship protocols on Zion's website on, under worship. And if you have any questions about any of those, uh, you can feel free to give us a call at the church office and we'd be happy to talk with you about that. Likewise, recently, the COVID-19 task force um, agreed that small groups of 10 people or fewer are now all welcome to meet here at Zion inside the church building following um, our basic safety protocols of wearing masks and keeping social distancing. If you are part of a small group that would like to meet here at the church, please give Wendy a call at the church office ahead of time so that we can make sure we have an open space available for you when you plan to come. If you have any other questions about that, also do give us a call and we're happy to talk about that with you. We also are very excited that our Wednesday evening programming has, um, is back up and running. Uh, this past Wednesday, September 30th, was our first official night of Club 56 and Confirmation small groups, some of which are meeting here in person at the church, and others are meeting online this year. So that is a new adventure for us and is very exciting. So um, we invite you to pray for our small groups of fifth through ninth graders as they, uh, as they participate together in faith formation this year. now to our loving God as we confess our sin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose name is majestic in all the earth, who rescues and heals in every time of trouble, who does all things well. Amen. Let us come before our God seeking forgiveness and life. Steadfast and saving God, we confess to you all the ways that we turn from you and harm one another. In your compassion, forgive our sins and heal our hurts. Lord, have mercy. Bringing forth from us a harvest of righteousness, the fruits of gentleness and peacemaking, the sheaves of wisdom and justice. Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, receive mercy and find grace in your time of need. Your transgressions are forgiven. God's love is a healing balm for your wounds. Rejoice, for God raises you up to new life in Christ. Amen. Amen. 
please pray with me the prayer of the day. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our service continues with the reading of scripture. We will hear Psalm 80, verses 7 through 15. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. Well, it's time for the children's sermon, so kids, turn on your listening ears, and parents, adults, anyone who is watching, of course you are welcome to the children's sermon, too. We are going to hear a reading in the Gospel story, which Pastor Byron will, will read for us next, a verse that says this, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Well, I have this stone here with me today. I think you can probably see it pretty well um, because in our gospel reading, Jesus is referred to as the stone, the stone that the builders rejected. So, to think about what this might mean, I wanted to show you a stone and have you think about some qualities or some properties of a stone. A stone is tough, right? It's not too easy to break this stone. A stone is sturdy, right? If I set this stone down on the floor and stand upon it, it will hold my weight. A stone you could use to build something, right? Maybe you've driven by a house and have seen some stone uh, part of the outside of the house. You can use a stone to build. Stones are strong. They are steadfast. They are unmoving on their own. They are sturdy. They help us to build things. Is Jesus that way? Is Jesus strong and sturdy? Is he a stable foundation for us to lean upon or a stable foundation for us to build our lives upon? If we stand firm on Jesus, he can certainly hold us up. Jesus is a stone and he is a stone for us. Jesus is strong. We can depend on him and if we set our lives sturdy upon Jesus, we will be strong and we will stand on his love. The stone is heavy, so I'm going to put it down for a minute. But I invite you to think about these connections today, how Jesus is like a stone, how he is strong for us, how he gives us life, and when we rely upon him, we are strong too. So, let's pray together, and you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for being strong like a stone. Thank you for being strong like a stone. 
Thank you to Jesus. Thank you to Jesus for being a sturdy foundation for us. For being a sturdy foundation for us. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, to rely on you, to rely on you, not only when we are struggling, not only when we are struggling, but each and every day, but each and every day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being a strong, sturdy stone for being a strong, sturdy stone. Amen. Thank you for coming to our children's sermon today. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom come. It only takes about one second to pray that prayer. Many of us have prayed it hundreds, maybe even thousands of times in our lives, almost exclusively praying it within the context of a larger prayer that we call, of course, the Lord's Prayer. One second, thy kingdom come. And then we move on. There's not a lot of time to reflect on what we are praying when we say those three words. In the Gospel of Matthew, there are many references to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, which insofar as, as I can tell are basically interchangeable terms. Jesus refers to the kingdom of God in our reading for today in a verse towards the end of the reading when he says, Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. Wow, those words caused me to stop and think. And so I became curious about how often this kingdom language is used in the Gospel of Matthew. I decided to skim through the entire Gospel. It took me probably a little over half an hour. Not reading slowly by any means, or carefully, but rather 
having my antenna up to notice every time kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven is used in Matthew's gospel. And it comes up a lot. In case you're interested in making a personal Bible study out of this, I have made a list of all these verses in Matthew, and I'd be happy to email this list to you if you would like it. When I noticed in my rapid run through Matthew, uh, what I noticed is that the kingdom of God is not like any other kingdom or government of this world. I suppose it's because of this that I find I am continually learning, continually growing in my understanding of what Jesus was talking about and using this term. Often, as in today's gospel reading, Jesus uses parables, stories to reveal and even at other times to hide the depth of meaning captured by this kingdom language. In today's parable, a landowner rents out his land and then sends out messengers to the renters to collect the produce or the uh, rental income that is due the owner. Strangely, the renters refuse to pay the rent and instead abuse the messengers. Finally, the owner's son is sent, only to be killed by those who should have paid their rent. One interpretation of this story is that over the years, God's chosen people hardened their hearts to the message of prophets sent by God. Over and over, the prophets called people to turn from idol worship, evil and selfishness, to the way of life God created them to live. The people, the prophets called the people to authentic worship, not just nice words and impressive prayers and pleasant songs, but worship shown in the true worship of God, which is through a lifestyle that displayed a concern for the poor and the oppressed, the weak and the outcasts. The prophets called the people to work for justice, to make right that which was wrong, to stop their selfish living and share out of their abundance with those who had little. In short, the prophets called people to bear fruits of the kingdom, actions consistent with the rule of God in their lives. In this parable, the landowner finally sends his son, who should be respected and listened to, but who instead is killed by the tenants. Likewise, God sends his son, Jesus, who would be put to death by the religious and political leaders of his day. In the topsy-turvy world of the kingdom of God, those who thought they were in were out, and those who thought who were thought to be outside of God's realm of love were welcomed in. Ouch! These are challenging words, but they are life-giving words if we have the ears to hear. Our Heavenly Father has chosen to give us the kingdom, a kingdom that has no earthly boundaries, really no boundaries between heaven and earth. We are given the gift of life in the kingdom, which has a blessed, in which there is a blessed hope for when our earthly lives are over, as well as a blessed way of life while we are here on earth. This life is blessed in that we are empowered by the Spirit of Jesus Christ to live as humble stewards of the gifts God has entrusted to us, our talents, our intellect, our material possessions, our time. Baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ, we are welcomed into and called to a life of living under the righteous, compassionate rule of God. We see many examples of human beings living out that call very faithfully, and the fruits of the kingdom are seen in us. But there's another sign to us as well, as we learn in this parable, we human beings fall short. We have plenty of reminders every day 
but all sorts of ugly stuff comes out of us. And we need to hear the words of John the Baptist regarding the kingdom early in the Gospel of Matthew when John says, repent, that is turn around, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. There needs to be a change in our lives. While it may, might not be fun to hear these words, they are truly life-giving. Once again, as we come to the Lord's Supper today, we hear words that give us a fresh start. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. These grace-filled words set our bearings as people of the kingdom of God. These words promise forgiveness. They inspire humble thankfulness. They lead us to compassionate living. Yes, indeed. We pray that one second prayer again today. Thy kingdom come. We pray that the wonderful rule of God may become more and more a reality in our lives. We pray with an open heart, aware of God's faithfulness. We pray with joyful expectation. Yes, again, today we pray, O Lord, may your kingdom come to us. Amen. together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in our prayers for the church, for the world in need, and for all of God's wonderful creation. Let us pray. Creator God, we come before you asking prayers for those who lead nations, cities, churches, and homes. As you poured out your love in the world in this word, may we hear your word and follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, we come before you, a people whose lives are broken into shards. 
from sin, suffering, sickness, poverty, hunger, trafficking, tropical storms or wildfires. Especially we name before you the people in our community who have health concerns. We pray for Marilyn, Sid, Morris, Clint, Tracy, Candy, Bob, Michelle, Bobby, Mitchell, Ray, Chrissy, Abigail, Sharon, Luann, Ashley, Henry, Kirk, and Doug. Help us as we name these loved ones before you to see you, O oh God, and to see as you see, to see your love poured out in this world. May we hear your word and follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we come before you seeking to live as you command, but often find ourselves failing, and thus we are torn by cries of despair, of anger, of power, for control, being lost to foolishness and in stumbling blocks. Despite your love in this world, help us to hear your word and follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle God, we come before you giving thanks for all our blessings, the gift of life itself, hope, faith, love, family, friends, celebrations, anniversaries, births, birthdays, and all we care for this day. Help us to be your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathering God, we pray for the church, for all the branches of the vine, including this one, we gather as a part of today, body of Christ, people of Christ. Help us to hear your word and follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Incline your heart, O gracious God, and teach us to love better than we have before, more than we have before, expansively than we have before. O Christ, our rock and our redeemer, we pray these things, trusting in your love. Amen. At this time in worship, we would collect the offering, but instead we once again offer a word of heartfelt gratitude and thanks, people of Zion, for your ongoing commitment to the sustaining work of God's ministries here in this community. Please continue to uh, mail or deliver your checks for offering or contribute via Simply Giving or our new Give Plus mobile app. And so we pray together the offering prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth food from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We give thanks that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and giving thanks, he poured it out for all of them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we prepare to receive these gifts of God, let us join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus loves you just as you are. At this time, if you need to pause the worship video and gather bread and wine or juice of your choosing, what you have at your home is perfectly good. Uh, I invite you to pause the video and go get those elements, and when you're ready, you can resume and receive with me. Dear child of God, this is the body of Christ given for you. Dear child of God, the blood of Christ is shed for you. If you're communing with other people in your household, please speak these words to one another. And when all have received, hear this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you go on your way, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. Share Christ's love. Thanks be to God. Amen.